Okay, so today we're going to be doing uh, palabras inter interrogativas. Okay, palabras, you know what palabras means? Alguien sabe, anyone know, que significa palabras? Palabras is the word for words. So palabra means word, palabras means words, okay? Um, so what does interrogativas mean? Interrogative, so interrogative words. Or, you know, I'm sorry, I said, um, yeah, interrogative words, but does anyone know what preguntas means? Preguntas. We studied, we did the verb last year, I'm pretty sure we did. Preguntar. Preguntar means what? To. It was preguntar and pedir. Pedir means to ask for something. Preguntar means to ask, like ask a question. Okay? So, uh, preguntas interrogativas means pregu interrogative questions. Because preguntas is a question, and palabras is words. Okay? Alright. Um, so, there's a list on page 15 of how many is that? Five, ten different question words or phrases. Okay? And you should know what each of these are. Let's uh, read the sentence, each or each little conversation. Uh, ¿A dónde vas para las vacaciones? Or, ¿A dónde vas para las vacaciones? And then they answer, Yo voy a Miami para las vacaciones. So, what does a dónde mean? Any guesses? Not to go. Where. To where, right. To where. Okay, como. ¿Qué significa como? ¿Cómo estás? Ah, yo estoy muy bien. Gracias. ¿Qué significa como? En inglés. Sí, ¿cómo estás? Significa how are you. Juniors, F through L. Juniors, F through L. ¿Cómo estás? Significa how are you. Pero, ¿qué significa como? Solo como. No como estás. ¿Qué significa solo como? What is como? How. Right? How. How are you? Estás means you are. So como estás means how you are. Okay? All right. Um, ¿Cuál es tu color favorito? Ah, mi color favorito es el, el verde. So, ¿qué significa cuál? What? Sí, yes. What y cuál also means which. Okay? Like W H I C H, not W I T C H. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about cuando? <clears throat> Answer. Me. I can't hear. It's alright. I just I thought you were talking to me. So. Cuando. Cuando, cuando, cuando. You guys like um, Michael Bublé? You guys know that song? Anyone? Alright. Cuando. When. Cuando, cu cuando estudian las alumnos. Cuando estudian los alumnos. Estudian por la tarde. So when are the students studying? The students are studying at night, por la tarde. Okay, so cuánto is very similar, but cuánto is a different word. So, ¿qué significa cuánto? Uh, 
Uh, if you're not already, you should be writing down what these mean, because you're going to be quizzed on on the meaning of these. So, ¿qué significa cuánto? Huh? How many? Yes, and how much? Good. So, ¿cuánto cuesta? How much does it cost? Cuesta cinco pesos por la carro. ¿Cuántas clases tienes? How many classes do you have? So, how much does it cost? ¿Cuánto cuesta? And how many classes? So, so it means both. Okay, good. So, if a donde significa to where, entonces, ¿qué significa de donde? No, no, de donde. Of where or from where, usually. <clears throat> oh, I thought you said uh, how many. <laughs> I know, it's not at all alike, but that is what I thought you said. Good, okay, y donde significa solo where. Bueno, uh, que significa por qué? Por qué? ¿Qué significa por qué? Uh-huh, for what? Exactly. Which is also the same thing as what in English? Why? Yes. Does anybody know the response to the question por qué? Notice por qué is two words and there's an accent on the E. Por qué? Yeah, por qué? Por qué means because. So, por qué, two words with an accent on the E means why, but por qué, if you notice, it says it in the box. Por qué estudias español? Why do you study Spanish? Yo estudio español, I study Spanish. Por qué? Because. When it's one word and no accent mark, that is the word for because. And you should know the difference, otherwise you'll be very confused. A donde es to where. Ok. Uh, ¿Qué significa qué? What. Sí. Entonces, ¿cuál es la diferencia por la cual y qué? What's the difference for cual y qué? They both mean what. Cual means which. So, how do you know when to use which one? Any guesses? Yo ni no sé. ¿Quién es tu mejor amigo? ¿Qué significa quién? ¿Quién? Who? Muchas gracias. Okay, so let's go to the top of the page now that we got the vocab. Notice the position of the subject and verb in each of the following sentences. The first one is a sentence, like a indicative sentence, and then the second one is a question, okay? The subject, los estudiantes, juniors, M through Y, juniors, M through Y. Okay, uh, so los estudiantes viajan a Chile, the students travel to Chile, the subject is at the beginning. The next one, tu bebes café con leche, which means you drink coffee with milk, so tu is the subject and it comes first, and then again, Pedro, or Peter, Pedro, subject, tiene tres clases por la tarde. So, Pedro has three classes in the evening. Now, look at how it changes when it's a question. ¿A dónde viajan los estudiantes? Not only is there a question word first, ¿a dónde? But the subject, los estudiantes, the ones doing the action of the verb, comes after the verb. So, in the first one it says, the students travel to Chile, which is exactly like English. But the question, to where do they travel the students? Do you see the difference? OK. 
Okay, so when a question in Spanish becomes a question and not a sentence, the subject comes after the verb, not before the verb, like normal. Okay? That's what you should know. Does everyone have that? Okay. So again, ¿Qué bebes tú? The tú is a subject pronoun for you. What, what do you drink, you? Again, you could just say ¿Qué bebes? Right? Because bebes is a conjugation for you drink. But if it's a question and you're emphasizing you, you can say ¿Qué bebes tú? What do you drink? So if somebody says, uh, if we're at the store, Nick and I are getting Five Guys. You like Five Guys? Right on. So we're at Five Guys, and I'm like, I'm getting a slushy or a, a milkshake thing. And then I ask Nick, ¿Qué bebes tú? What do you want to drink? Right? So I'm emphasizing you, but the two comes after the verb. ¿Tiene Pedro por la tarde? ¿Cuántas clases tiene Pedro por la tarde? In statements, the subject usually precedes the verb. So in statements, the subject, los estudiantes, usually precede the verb viajan in the Chile. The pattern is subject plus the verb. But when forming a question, using an interrogative word, the subject usually follows the verb. So in this case, the pattern is interrogative word, which is that list below, a donde, como, cual, cuando, cuanto, de donde, donde, por qué, que, en, quien. Interrogative word plus a verb plus the subject after. And again, you need to have a question mark at the end and an upside down one at the beginning. Okay? When the subject is already understood and you don't need to clarify or emphasize, the subject can be omitted. So, where the first one, a donde viajan los estudiantes? So, in, in this case, let's say we're talking about the eighth grade Maui trip. Okay? We're already talking about eighth grade and we're talking about Maui trip. And then uh, Jackson comes up and he's like, oh, you guys are talking about the students. Uh, he doesn't have to say, ¿A dónde viajan los estudiantes? Where are the students traveling? He can just say, because we're talking about the students, ¿A dónde viajan? Where are they going? Ah, we're still going to Maui this year. Okay? So, uh, ¿Qué bebes? Or, ¿Qué bebes tú? You can say it either way. All right, let's turn the page. Deborah is a student from Santiago, Chile. What questions would you ask her to find out the following information about her? How would you ask her for her name? She's a student from Santiago. Yep, yeah. como te llamas? So there's, there's two ways, right? Como te llamas? Como is how. Te llamas. Te means yourself. Yamas means you call, right? So if it's an AR verb, yamar, yamo, yamas, yama, yamamos, not yo mama, yamamos, yamamais, sorry, not yamamais, it's yamamos and yamais, and then yaman, yaman. <laughs> All right, so that's an AR verb just like hablar, right? to speak, yo hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablais, hablan, o as, a, amos, ais, an, llamar is the same thing, so llamar, l-l-a-m-a-r, means to call, and that's the verb they use when you are naming yourself, because that's what you call yourself, your name, okay, so, but it becomes reflexive, it's not just you doing the action of calling, you have to call yourself, thus the difference between two and te. That's why it's como te llamas, not como tu llamas. Okay, so if we look at it again, this is a question, right? With an interrogative word at the beginning. Como te llamas? Como is the interrogative word. But according to the rules that we just read, the subject pronoun comes after the verb llamas, which means te is not a subject pronoun. It's a direct object pronoun. Or in the, actually, in this case, it's a reflexive pronoun. It means yourself. So, como te llamas? What do you call yourself? So, uh, Anson, you said, I think, como te llama, right? Okay, so you're getting two of them mixed up. You've got como te llamas, the te and the llamas go together. Okay, or you can say como 
se llama usted. Now let's break that down, okay? We got como, interrogative word. That's the formal one. Como te llamas is informal. Yeah, but good job. I'm glad you're remembering that. So let's look at, on page 15, that interrogative, the formula, right? Interrogative word plus verb plus subject. So let's break this question down. Como se llama usted? Como is the interrogative word. Se llama is the verb because se is a reflexive pronoun, but it always goes with the verb. So it's part of the verb. Se llama, even though it's, it's spelled separately. You don't like, it's not one word, right? So como se llama, verb, then subject pronoun, usted. So that is the subject pronoun. But you have to have the subject pronoun if you're going to be formal. Because if you don't have usted with llama, then se llama means himself. Because remember, llama is third person singular. Right? So o as a, llamo, llamas, llama. Llama means he calls, or she calls, or it calls. Unless you have usted with it. At that point, it becomes formal and it means you call. Does everyone remember usted? Give me a thumbs up if you're following along. Okay, good. So that means that it's still following the same formula. Interrogative word plus the verb, including the reflexive pronoun, se llama, and then the subject pronoun, usted. So the first answer, her name, how do you ask her name? Como te llamas, because she's a student. If you're a little kid, not you guys, you might refer to her como se llama usted, but I mean, she's a student, she's not a teacher, so you don't need to speak formally. Okay, what about her age? All these questions are asking you to, to um, <coughs> use the interrogative question words on page 15, so it should be one of those. How do you ask her how old she is? <coughs> Any guesses? Cuantos años, correct. So cuantos años is means how many years. Años is years. So in this case, not all of these wor question words are like this, but in this case, cuantos is an adjective, right? How many years? It's, it's describing the word years, which is a noun. So somebody tell me, is años masculine, feminine, singular, or plural? Años. I'll give you a hint. Los años. Plural and masculine or feminine. Los años. Huh? Masculine. Right, masculine, plural. Okay, good. So that means that the adjective cuanto needs to match. So cuantos would be correct. Okay? Because cuantos is masculine, plural too. If it was not años, but it was días, days, then what would cuantos be? Here, no, no, let's do a different one. Um, how many doors? Puertas, puertas. Qu what? Cuantas puertas, how many doors? Okay, what about días? Days. <clears throat> What's, how do you say how many days? You've got four answers, four, you got four chances, right? Cuanto, cuanta, cuantos, cuantos. Cuantos, yes. Because dias ends in an as, but it's actually masculine. That was a trick question. That's why I didn't do it first. Okay, makes sense? You gotta change cuantos according to the gender and number, masculine, feminine, singular, plural, of the noun it's describing. Doors, days, years, whatever it is. So, good. Cuantos años, how many years? But you don't just say cuantos años, how many years? You gotta say how many years, what? A verb, right? What verb do we use? Huh? No, no, say it louder. Okay. 
Well, in, in English we say, how old are you? So to be. But in Spanish we don't use to be, we use to have. Okay, how many years do you have? So, ¿cuántos años? How do you say you have? How many years do you have? Anyone conjugate tener? Tienes, good, good job. Good, so ¿cuántos años tienes? How many years do you have? Okay, where is she from? Last one. And then I'll let you guys do the rest for homework. Where is she from? Or seventh grade A through G. Seventh grade A through G. So it's asking the number three is how do you ask her where she's from? But you're still asking her. So how do you ask her, a person, where are you from? Look at the question words. Huh? Yes, de donde eres. Good. What does eres come from? Ser. Yes, comes from ser, which means ser. Ser means good to be. And why do we use ser and not estar for this question? You're right. It is donde eres, but why? Always trying to familiarize yourself with the difference and when to, and wrong time to use said and a star is super important because it's not always easy, right? So in this case, anybody have a guess why you would use said and not a star? Well, said is the permanent one. You're on the right track though. It does have to do with the place. Any other guesses? That's a good guess, Sydney. Uh, no. You, you normally, if you're talking about location, you use estar. Where is something? Donde está? La clase. Where is the class, right? So that's a good point because in this case, the reason you use ser does have to do with location, but that's not really the deciding factor. It's not a matter of where that's the deciding factor. Where is just simply a part of the answer. But normally you would use estar when you're talking about location of something. But you're not really talking about the location of something in this question, are you? You're talking about who you are as a person, where you come from, right? You're not there physically at the moment. Uh, and even the fact that you always will have been born wherever you were born, Ohio or Hawaii, um, wherever you were born, that's not always gonna be where you're from, right? You, a lot of people like Sydney, you might feel like you're from a lot of different if you moved a lot, right? So where you're from isn't necessarily permanent. So again, we have this distinction between sad and a star, temporary, permanent, right? Um, but it's not always quite that clean cut. Sad has more to do with the characteristics about you that make you who you are. Okay, that's what you use sad for. Uh, de donde eres? Where are you from? Who are you? right not uh, I can't find you where are you that's a totally different question right that's not talking about what kind of person you are when somebody says where's your house and where are you li where do you live right okay so um, that's why you say de donde eres not de donde estas because it has to do with who you are so. all right um, that is the lesson for today so anybody have any questions all right, your homework is activities one and two. So go ahead and start working on those and I'll come around and see how you're doing.